Hey there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. So this video is a continuation from my A-level chemistry video, but it's basically just me going through my A-level subjects and saying things I wish I'd known, um, any advice I have and just generally like how I found the subject in year 12. So I'm currently in my room in Thailand because I'm on holiday. I've got my um, dragon fruit smoothie. If you've not had dragon fruit before, highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, today I am talking about biology. So you may or may not know that I want to do biology at university. So obviously my first thing to say about AS biology is that it is so interesting. I literally used to like love going to the lessons and um, I would quite happily read ahead. I also love my teachers, so shout out to you wonderful teachers. Right, so the main issue with biology is while it is interesting, there is so much content, like so much content you don't even realize until you start doing it. We hardly finished the content for AS biology and yet my teachers were having to work us like bam, 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 get through this subchapter now in this lesson. Like we did not go through it slowly and yet we hardly finished um, purely because of how much content there really is. There are so many chapters and each subchapter, which is like a lesson, is so dense in new vocabulary and new, new terms, um, new processes. And it becomes quite difficult to keep on top of when you're like in the middle of the year and you not only have to learn the new stuff, you have to remember all this old stuff. And if you don't remember chapter one, then it's difficult to do chapter five. And you know, the chapters do really link, like the first few chapters do become the base for the next few chapters. Obviously because it's so much content, I recommend staying on top of it. And the best way to do that is to firstly make sure you know the best way that works for you revision wise. So for me, it was flashcards for biology because it's just loads of content and I liked to have chapters of flashcards which I can just like bam bam, look at, look at the content, look at all the new words. Like it's a very, very wordy subject which I kind of like because I sort of, I like words and I like language. But yeah, it's a lot of new terms so flashcards are quite good to just like look at. I would make sure that after every single lesson, like I don't care how tired you are and stuff, I mean, I do care, but you know what I mean? Like, I, after every single lesson, make sure you get those flashcards or posters or whatever done for that lesson by the end of that day. So whether you have a free after the lesson or you go home and you do it after that lesson, make sure it gets done because one lesson, one lesson's worth of notes can take over an hour to write up on flashcards, um, especially if you're adding stuff from a textbook. If you leave more than three or four lessons, it becomes a massive chore to start writing up flashcards. So that is my number one tip, is stay on top of writing your notes for biology. It's just, you have to, you absolutely have to. And that's the biggest regret of people in my class is that they didn't do that from the start. So yeah. Um, equally, going along with that, consolidate your notes at least once a week, like at least. So say you're going into, a, into your next lesson of biology, you haven't had a lesson for two days maybe, and let's be honest, you can't remember what was going on in the last lesson. This is your opportunity to, just before your new lesson, read over the notes from the last lesson and make sure that you kind of get it. Because if you don't, and you walk into the next lesson not having understood the last one, then you suddenly have two lessons which you have to go and understand, and that will build up. So if you really don't understand it, ask your teacher then and there, or stay after school, or stay off at break, go see them at lunch, anything. Just keep on top of it, like in the present tense. So as I said with um, A-level chemistry, you think you know the content until you do past paper questions and exams. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically with biology, you know, I love it. I feel like I really understand it. It's great, awesome, cool, love the content. And then I hit the exams and the tests and it just feels like gibberish. It feels like foreign. Like what were the examiners thinking? Like this is nothing to do with anything. This is especially prevalent with biology because 
most of its application and you're just thinking what is going on here and it's really good to get into the habit of whenever you see a question instantly try and relate it back to which chapters that you know because then you can start to um remember the keywords that you're probably going to need to include in that question which brings me on to my next thing ah just like everything in science the mark scheme for a-level biology is basically the worst thing ever because it is the most specific thing you will ever encounter and this is why I actually think I have not done too well in my AS exams for biology purely because of that bloody mark scheme like you can know it you can know the content and you can have worked hard on this content but if you don't get the precise words that that mark scheme wants nah you get no marks and it's so frustrating for me, I literally hate it. Especially because I love biology so much and I want to do well. It's like, you just get your paper back and it's clear that you, you knew kind of what you were talking about, but you just couldn't get the words that they wanted on the mark scheme. It was prevalent at GCSE, but at A-level it's just amplified. And the only way that you can combat that is doing more past paper questions, do old spec questions, do last year's papers questions, just keep doing more and kind of see the ones that are like common questions I mean there are some, it doesn't really happen that much at A level but there definitely are common questions also make sure you're really up on the, the quick questions so things like what bond is between this and this like one mark, make sure that you know what that bond is, you know what I mean? It's not an application question, it's purely knowledge so make sure that your knowledge is good and finally I recommend further reading and further reading comes in two senses, I think. So the first sense I would say is read ahead on your specification for biology, even like a few pages. So say you've got a lesson coming up, read through the double page spread for that lesson, make sure you have a vague idea of what's going on, you know, try and visit some of the terminology, see if you understand it, and then you'll be more prepared to go into that lesson with a really base understanding, because then you can get the teacher to go through things that you didn't understand previously, and also you'll be visiting um, words for the second time, which makes you more likely to understand it and remember it. And equally further reading, read some random magazines, like Biological Sciences magazine. My teacher was amazing and um, offered to get us set up with like a, a subscription for um, Biological Sciences. And if I have some free time in a free or something, you know, flick through that, read it, cool just kind of apply your knowledge to things that are outside of the specification because that'll help you in the application questions and it'll also like help put your knowledge like into context. Oh, just turn off the aircon. Yeah, I think that's everything, I think. Mm. I will do another sort of biology related video in the future, I think, because it's a hard one. Across the year I generally did do well, but I had to work my socks off for it. And again, it was quite variable with how I did. So I would like to do like another video on like how to do well in biology. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, my next one should be maths, I think. I've got, got my notes in my little book. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and good luck with everything.